Uh, we're dedicating the Shiur Leilu Nishma Devora Feige Bat Shemuel, Ora Devora Bat Shemuel, Lea Bat Yosef, and Esther Rivcha Bat Avraham. Refuah Shema for Menachem Hana Ben Sarah B'toch Rosh Hashanah Yisrael. Rabotai, starting the month of Elul, we have to understand, first of all, what is exactly our job on, on, on Elul? During the Shuvah, we have to do the Shuvah the whole year. Mitzvah Aseh or Oraita writes the Rambam. So Elul, it's not the moment only for the Shuvah. What is exactly our job the days of Elul? Years ago, in Israel, there was a case of a boy around 16 years old. He disappeared from his house. I'm talking about a religious boy, yeshiva boy, in Bnei Berak, disappear. First hours are passing, the kid is not coming back home at night, and the parents are trying to call him, he have, it, he have a phone. There is no answer. And they try here, and they try there, the kid is not coming. They call up one of the rabbis, listen, rabbi, we don't know what to do. Wait. 11 p.m., 12 a.m., 2 a.m., the kid doesn't come. Now, Rabotai, the stress and the feelings that the parents had, lo alenu, lo alenu. You know, the worst thing, the Gemara writes, en simcha ela asfekot. There is no major happiness that when you have a doubt and the doubt is solved. I don't know, solved for good, solved for bad, but whenever you have a doubt is the worst. And they started to imagine whatever, everything. Doesn't matter that the rabbi went to one of the Gedolim, he went to few Gedolim, he went also to Rav Chaim Kanevsky. Rav Chaim Kanevsky said, Don't worry, he's going to come back. But Rabotai, three entire days, the kid, there is nothing, no one knows about him. Not his friends, not his, uh, not people in the street, nothing. He just disappeared. Police got involved, they put up pictures, all Bnei Berak looking for the kid. After three days, this rabbi that was, uh, that was uh, uh, helping out the family gets a call from a family member up north. I don't know if it was Tzfat or Tveria or one of the, the, those places. And he tells him, listen, it's weird. I know that you have to, uh, to do a lot with, uh, with youth. It's weird. I have in front of me there is a, in Hebrew it's called Tzimer. Tzimer is like a type of uh, motel, hotel, I don't know, like renting an, uh, an apartment with a pool. And now it's already the middle of this man learning in Yeshivot. And I see a boy, religious boy, is the whole entire day in the pool. <laughs> no friends, no nothing. He just smokes cigarettes, he's in the pool. He hears music, he's enjoying his life. He's talking with the phone to his friends. Hanasana, it's already two or three days like that. <laughs> the rabbi jumped at the guy. How he looks like, where is he? And he ran. Rabotai, he got, to, he got to, to the north. And the rabbi knew a little bit the boy. The boy sees the rabbi. Rabbi, what are you doing here? So now nah, I was just, you know, passing by. But... What are you doing here? Rabbi, please don't tell my parents that I'm here. Mazi, he had a fight, whatever. He says, listen, your parents are crying. They, they, they worry about you. To make the long story short, the parents came. The mother came first. They bought a very nice cake and everything because the rabbi told them how to do it. The mother came in and she knocked the door. She ring up the bell. And the boy... Shut up the bell. He didn't, he didn't want it to open to his mother. That night, they had to go back, the parents, to their, home, to, to their home crying. And the rabbi again, he came and he spoke with the kid and, until they opened up. Rabotai, you know what's Elul? Kol dodi dofek pithili. On Elul, we have Bore Olam, 
knocking at our door. He's looking for us. We were the whole entire year hanging out, enjoying here, enjoying here. We forgot about Borei Olam. Comes Akados Baruch Hu and Elul and he says, my kids, open me the door. And that's our job. Our job is to feel the love of Akados Baruch Hu. Yes, the whole year we have to worship Akados Baruch Hu. But the days of Elul, Borei Olam is coming until us. Is knocking at the, uh, at, the, at the doors of our hearts. And he wants our love back. Now, I want to tell you something. And this is Mamash, one of the deep, deep, deep secrets to be able to get written in the book of life. Bezat Hashem, this coming up here. But only that will be if we know how to work those days of Elul. There is a very tough parasha. Parasha that he speaks about Berachot and Kelalot. Usually, before Rosh Hashanah, we're going to be reading that parasha because we want that Tichle Shana Vikilelotea, Tahal Shana Ubilchotea. Very tough Kelalot. Lo Alenu, we're going to be reading it. 98, I believe. Kelalot, tough. Tough ones, one after the other. And the Pasuk of the Torah writes, the reason of all those curses that Barminan Amisai can deserve is only because of one reason. Because you didn't worship Akadosh Baruch Hu with happiness. And the Mefashim ask, I don't understand. You understand what the Pasuk is telling you? The reason you would that fulfill all the 613 mitzvot. He doesn't miss one. He comes every day, shaharit netz, korbanot. He dies, he put on tefillin with the Shem Yehud, talid with the Shem Yehud, tefillah with kavana. Every Shem Hashem that he takes out from his heart, with the kavana. He comes and learns Torah. He gives tzedakah. He does, he does minut hasadim. He does kibudorim. He kul hatzot even. He does everything. And Ban Minan, these Yehudi deserve curses. How come? Says the Pasuk, because you're not happy when you're doing it. Because when you do the mitzvot, it's heavy for you. How can we understand that? Rabotai, I mentioned that many times in the past. If we want to know what is the way in between, how our relationship have to look in between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Open up a house and look how the parents and the kids have the relationship. You can have a father that asks from his kids all type of things. Listen, help me out over here, help me out over there. But every time that the kid stands up to do it, he does it, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. What the father, how the father is going to react? You know what? I don't want to see you. <laughs> go to your room. Go play. Don't help me. I Really, I don't need the help. I just want, you know, I want to spend time with you, but if every time that I'm asking for you to spend that time with me, it's heavy. To, don't come. Rabotai will understand that. So why we don't understand that the same thing happened in between us and Borei Olam? That every time that we wake up, how is that we're waking up? Do we wake up, Baruch Hashem, I have an opportunity to come to Shul. You know how many Jews, they have places all around us, here in the U.S. They wish to have Minyan every day. They wish. No Minyanim. Tefillin. There are people that they have no money. Once we went, you know, there was a, 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 a young fellow that unfortunately his father didn't bought for him to fill in for his bar mitzvah. He didn't have money. He begged these people, please help me out. I want to buy to fill in. And how many people they wish to do mitzvot that they cannot and we have the opportunity and the ability and we have the health to do it. Tachat asher lo avat et Hashem enokecha 
What's our job? Our job, Rabotai, is to be able, this month especially, to show to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, now that he's knocking at the door, I want to come. I want to open it and I want to hug you, Borei Olam. Ashrenu matov halkenu manaim goralenu. That we have the opportunity to stand up, to say selichot, to do mitzvot. Do it b'simcha. I want to tell you an amazing story, but before that, all this shiur, I heard it recently. Before that, Rabbi Chaim Mivolojin, I think it was. No, the Chosemi Lublin, Mechila. Chosemi Lublin was a great Chacham, had Ruach HaKodesh. And they, they had a custom in his shul to dance after the Tefilot of Rosh Hashanah. All type of dancing. They were finishing the Tefilah, everybody was dancing. One of the years, a guy came up to pray with them. And, uh, you know, he prays the whole Tefillah, and then he finds out that all the, all the people in shul, they start to dance. Now, Rabotai, it's Rosh Hashanah, it's not the Esmachat Torah Purim. Rosh Hashanah. And this guy looks at the people, Mishnunim. What's going on over there? Jumping, dancing, doing. The Chosem in Lublin realized that he's, uh, that he's looking weird. Called him up. He says to the, uh, to, the, to the man, you see all those people dancing? Yeah. You're asking yourself why, right? He put the hand, his hand on the face of this fellow. And at that moment, the fellow says, all of a sudden, I see, I feel like my, my neshama is up. And I see how all those people that they were dancing, they have been, been reading the Sefer Chaim, Beracha, Shalom for the whole entire year. Then the rabbi takes out the, 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 the hand of it off, uh, from my eyes. And then he says, you see that man? And he sees a guy over there sitting, he doesn't want to dance, looking, eh. He covers his eyes, his eyes again. And he says, the Neshama again went up. And he sees, but Minan, which type of decrees this fellow is going to have throughout the year. And he takes out his hand. When he takes out the, uh, out the hand, the man looks at the Chosev in Lublin and he starts to yell, what about me? What about me? He says, what about you? Go dance. And Rezad Hashem is going to have a great year. Rabotai, yes, we have to understand that our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to be with happiness. Because only when there is happiness, you show love. And only when there is love that shows that our relationship with God is a real relationship. That's Elul. Ani le dodi ve dodi li. My beloved. Not Stam Chachamim are taking up this type of example. Because the whole job of Rosh Chodesh Elul, of the month of Elul, is to love HaKadosh Baruch Hu again. It's to get closer to Him. So I want to tell you, amazing story that I heard. There is a rabbi that uh, had a shiur, I don't know which, which city in Israel, oh yeah, in Nahariya. Went all the way up, up north. And the rabbi was starving, he didn't eat from the morning. He explained why he didn't eat. He had Mina uh, Shamayim, he didn't eat. He finished up at night, he was starving. He had half an hour before taking up the train. He asked, there is any, you know, fast food place? He told him, yes, there is a kosher uh, shawarma, I don't know what, right over here. He enters to the place and he realizes he forgot his wallet in the house. He just brought the ticket for the train, and he had 40 shekels. He says, listen, 40 shekels, it's enough. He gets to the place, and he sees one of the advertisings. In Hebrew, it's called Arucha Iskit. You know, you're going to eat like a king. How much? 39 shekel. He says, I'm not going to have my plate. Arucha Iskit includes also drink, soft drink. You know, he was already... He's waiting in the line, and the line is passing fast. 
One guy was in front of him, and all of a sudden, a huge guy, huge, behind him, touched his shoulder. Tzadik, I need your help. He said, Tzadik, Tzadik, man, <laughs> let, me, let me eat. He said, no, please, Tzadik, you look rabbi, you look, uh, do me a favor. I, I got stuck without money. And I need 39 shekels to take the train to Tel Aviv. Now, Rabbi, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be open. What will be our reaction? So listen, I don't have, I wish, you know. <laughs> right? He said, at that moment, you remember something that he learned. Now whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings up to you is a challenge. It's not time that the guy fall on you, Davka. No such thing. It's a challenge. He said, he turned up and he says, of course. You know what? I'm going to go together with you to buy you the ticket. Anyway, I have to take the train to also whatever. And they went. And he said, I decided, I had Ruach Kedusha like that. I decided to do it with all the Simcha. I got to the place. I paid the ticket. And once I got the ticket, I turned up to the guy and I told him, right now, let's dance. And in the middle of the, we started to dance. I gave him the ticket. He said, next morning, he got, he got home, he ate something, he got home. Next day, his son came up to him and he, he told him, Abba, you're a rabbi, you're giving classes all the time, back and forth, I don't see you. Now it's summer. Daddy, I want you to come to me with me to a pool. He's right. Which pool there is tonight, there is a pool for men, separate pool for men. Yalla, ready to go. They organized himself, they got there. Now he gets to the pool, and there is it's a public pool. Yeah, for men, but huge. There are locker, uh, lockers, and there are people that are. He realized that he got his wallet, and he had in his wallet $2,500. No, and I'm not sure. Yeah, two thousand five hundred dollars. That it wasn't his. That he had dollars, not shekels. With the visa, with the stuff, with the. Where are you gonna put it? Locals were were talking already. He says, you know what? I'm gonna put it inside my, my uh, one of my socks. I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna put it inside the shoe. No one is gonna realize that. Making the long story short. No one is going to look at it. No one is going to look at it. They finish up. And the shoe was there. And the socks was there. And the wallet, gone. Disappear. Now, but I'm going to finish up quick. It was stress. At the end of the day, he gets a, a phone call. And he says, Rabbi, you remember me? I am the guy from yesterday. You know, you helped me out. Listen, I am here in a bus in Hulon, another city. And uh, seems to be there is a guy that put up in Israel to, put, to enter to the, to the bus, there is a, a, a card. He put up the card and he forgot the card inside the machine. So the driver told me, do me a favor, take the card to the guy to the back. I take up the card and I see, I read, what's the name in the card? The name, your name, with your picture. I look at it. I look at the guy. I don't know what happened here. I had your number, I had your phone number and I called you up. Rabbi, what is this? He says, right now, do me a favor, take this guy. And because he was a huge man, he approached the guy and he sit on him. Telling him, I'm not gonna leave you until you will give me back the the wallet. Rabotai said, That's the sahar of a person who does mitzvot be aval besimcha. When you do a mitzvah besimcha, you get the payment right away. That's our job. Let's try this month. Every time that you fulfill a mitzvah, do it with a smile. And throughout that, Borei Olam will have a Hamim. And Be'ezat Hashem will have a great year. Be'ezat Hashem. Amen v'amen.